Welcome to the Trailer Island Podcast on another Wednesday. It's a very exciting uh, day as always. Wednesday's new episode of the Trailer Island Podcast. I'm Alex and I'm joined by... Uh, two drinks in Steve. And <laughs> I'm a very sober Matthew. <laughs> I wonder were the two drinks because you had to watch this film or... No. Uh, yes, two drinks because I was enjoying myself. Oh. Oh, oh, isn't that an interesting opinion? But I guess that's what we're here for because Absolutely. we do compare. What, what do we do, Matthew? Well, what we do is we take uh, film trailers, we, yeah. wa- we watch those, yeah. and then we go and see the film. <gasps> and then what we do is we discuss whether the film, or rather whether the trailer, properly represented the film we then got. Yes, did the film deliver what the trailer promised? And I hmm. guess that's what you we just We should get said. that on a t-shirt, shouldn't we? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I it's do good. want to make t-shirts, but that's a financial investment that I'm not yeah. prepared for. Yeah. Also, there's no t-shirt vendors on the island as well. I could make them, though. I'm not wearing another one of your t-shirts. Mm. I like the seaweed one you made the other day. Yeah, thank you. I thought that looked good. It really made my spare tire look nice. Oh. Well, at least it's gone to a better home, I suppose. I ate it. <laughs> you ate your seaweed jumper? Yeah. I did. I love how we're having this conversation after you just asked me what we're here to do, and this is not what we are here to do. We're just here to bugger about, you know. Oh, we are. Just hang out, yeah. We've actually talked long enough that the intro music has run out. Play it again. Uh, No. Uh, (laughs) Who who, who wants to Yeah, intro the film? I wouldn't mind if that's okay, Steve. And I want the full name. Yeah, because the title is so much fun to say. So we are going to be doing Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. The Joker and I broke up. I wanted a fresh start. But it turns out I wasn't the only Damon Gotham looking for emancipation. Spectacular news! You need me! Isn't this fun? It's just like a sleepover. We should order pizza. Big cosmos. Harley, focus. Okay. You could never call a woman a chick. I'll accept broad lady woman and on occasion bitch. Bitch? What are you talking about? that for me, will you? That's a fun trailer. That is actually, I love that trailer. Yeah, me too. I think it's fantastic. There's something about an old timey song. So it reminds me of the John Wick 3 trailer. Which oh, also yeah? did that yeah, too. Yeah, 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 I forget yeah. the song they used in that, but it was very effective. It's a revenge. St- is it a revenge? No, I don't this th- one. I, I think it's a good story. Her, her character arc in this Harley Quinn. So this. Sorry, a bit of context. Yeah, let's, let's give us some context. So yeah. this follows on from the the very controversial Suicide Squad, which by all accounts is not a terrific movie for whatever reason that is. Like studio interference, but that's not what we're here to discuss. It's just it is a terrible movie, and it introduced Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn, who is in that. Film Film, the girlfriend of the Joker, and in the in this film, which follows on, and she's the central character of this. Unlike in Suicide Squad, she has just broken up with the Joker and is basically trying to go at it alone. Mm-hmm. And this is about her, yeah, about find. I'm going to use the phrase finding herself and um, just sort of standing on her own two feet, setting Harley Quinn up as the the uh, anti heroine. Yeah, absolutely. I think this film does a much better job of the anti-hero than Suicide Squad does. Well, that's not a film. That's just a... It's trash. It's a snuff film. <laughs> if Yeah, the death of the film industry with that. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Anyway. Um, I think if we ever did that, I don't know if negative ratings are no, going to no. be a thing like, on the island. At least we can talk about this one, which is good. I genuinely think a discussion about Suicide Squad would be fairly interesting. It would be. Yeah. Uh, not as interesting as Batman versus Superman. Don't know what that film is. It's um, a great. Oh, let me tell you, pray. it's a Transformers <laughs> two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mortal uh, Engines. Mortal. Leave Mortal Engines out of it. That is a terrific film. Uh, so, Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. That's correct. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Is that, Starring, of course, Margot Robbie. Is that name in itself just a bit silly? Or? Well, I don't know. I mean, I we've said going for. But having said that, I, we've said this about five times, and I now love it despite being unsure about it when we started the recording. I was like, yeah, that's a terrific title. It fits in with the movie so well. Like, there are fourth wall breaks in this, you know, that kind of... They're subtle. They're not like Deadpool, but 
they do it's a bit meta and i think that title now that i think about it is probably quite perfect now this this film is in the universe of suicide squad yes yes because <laughs> If, because they can't escape it. Because they can't escape it. She's playing the same character. I think they're trying to distance themselves from that Suicide Squad, Squad film because they are making like a new version of it or something. Yeah, the Suicide Squad. With the, a similar uh, cast. And <laughs> some and some same characters. I think the, the guy who plays the boomerang or whatever, the Australian bloke. Jai Courtney. Jai Courtney. Sam Worthington? <laughs> no. <laughs> I think and, the only two returning ones are like uh, Jai Courtney and Margot Robbie. Because oh, were, were they the only two characters that people liked from Suicide Squad? Is Will that Smith is being replaced by Idris Elba. Will Smith was good in the film. He like, was okay. I don't but know. Will Smith always says the name of the film in the film. That is true. What are we, some kind of Suicide, suicide squad? squad? I just had to say that with it's you. It's me. Um, I. Robot. <laughs> I am. Legend. That too. This is the Men in Black. And Fresh Prince. Anyway, stop I'm referencing. I'm shooting the happiness. <laughs> Will Smith has nothing to do with this film. No. Now. Seven pounds. Uh, <laughs> Stop saying films. I went to the gym and I lost seven pounds. <laughs> I don't know why we're doing this because I legitimately want to talk about this film because it is really good. So um, in this film, because it's part of the Suicide Squad, I can't say Suicide Squad right. Oh, God. Wild, wild west. <laughs> Oh, I'm so sorry, dear listeners. This is this is what happens when you get sunstroke on an island. <laughs> Alex, please continue. So, Suicide Squad. No, wrong film. Oh, geez. Birds of Prey. Birds of Prey is full, part of the... Full su- title, please. Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn is part of the Suicide... Oh, my suicide. God. <laughs> We're doing suicide. So well. Suicide. Suicide Squad universe. Right. Okay. So... In this, the story goes that it seems like it's not long after that film mm. and... Margot Robbie's character, Harley Quinn, her and the Joker have split up. They are no longer an item. And the only reason that she hasn't been shot by everyone in town is because she was under the protection Mm -hmm. of the Mm -hmm. Joker, or she refers to him as Mr. J. And it's basically her story of her trying to survive now that the gangsters are after her. That's it. With a small addition that... There's a little MacGuffin in there as well. Explain. Well, she's trying to recover a diamond that has been engraved with the the bank details of an immense fortune. Yeah. Yeah, and I think just from that you can understand that this film whilst good does have a bit of a muddy plot. Yeah. It's, and uh, you yeah, you're right. It is it does have a goal, but I don't think that you could use her character as being very kooky and crazy as an excuse for the format of the film to be the way that it is. It's a bit muddy and it's a bit loose. It jumps back and forth quite a bit. That's just how I felt about it. Uh, I'd agree with that. I don't think it's... It doesn't follow an entirely linear structure, which is fine. You can play with that. But in this, it's not pulled off in any way. It just feels a bit... I don't want to say lazy, but yeah. I feel like it's just a bit lackluster with its structure. I would say the only reason that the, the structure exists is maybe for the rhythm or pacing of the film... Right. I thought the pacing was quite good. But yeah, the, the structure is... I, I do want to watch this again and because I, I did enjoy it and I think I will pick up more of what the structure is trying to achieve <laughs> with a second viewing. But it does thunder along pr- pretty well. Like the pacing's... It's only, a, uh, what is it, 109 minutes, I think. Yeah. And it doesn't really stop. Like it's a pretty good romp. It's concise. It is concise, yeah. And, um, See, and I, I felt like they could have cut stuff out. Oh, really? Yeah, I felt like it could have been shorter. Okay, okay. I, I say that because, okay, two qualifying statements. It could have stayed the same length if they extended the third act because okay. I, th- I think that third act is fantastic. It is, mm-hmm. yeah. It's everything leading up to it, which I found a little bit boring. I was like, you know, there is some, there's some good stuff in there, but I just felt it's just a bit messy to me. And yeah. it really found itself in that third act. Okay. It, it is, to be fair, something of an origin story. Yeah, I thought that was confusing because I went and yeah. looked into it and in the comics, Harley Quinn has nothing to do with Birds of Prey <laughs> at all. Yeah. So it's sort of a it's almost like a jumping off point for a new like D C franchise, The Birds of Prey. And by the end of the film, Harley Quinn's already off doing her own thing as well. Yeah. See, th- this is a franchise where the Justice League exists in this universe. Right. And I'm This is I'm... the same city that Ben Affleck lives in. Now talking just talking of the world. This is Gotham City as it should be. No, I disagree. Gotham City should be filthy, dirty, 
and have neon lights and this horrible smoke. And Gotham this, City uh, should be Tim Burton's. Yeah, I love Gotham City. I love Tim Burton's. And this is like Gotham. a meh version of it. Yeah, it's, it's not as good as Tim Burton's version, but it's it's sort of getting closer to like channeling the Arkham Knight video games. And I was like, I want I want Gotham City no. to not feel like a real place. I want it to be like it's this weird, perverse, fair ground, but in of a nightmare kind of fairground place i think the problem like <laughs> i understand what you're saying but i think the problem especially with just dc in general is they mythologize gotham city and so this is this, this, this the standing wonder this place of absolute awe and awesome and 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 extraordinary things happen there and and what we're giving and given in birds of prey is pretty just mediocre like it's they they just as soon as they can they always name drop this is gotham city it was it was a bit weird to see Gotham City in like broad daylight. Yeah. Did you find like yeah. I felt the same way when I when we saw um, the Joker, the Yaquin Phoenix film, which is obviously a much more grounded version. But Joaquin like, Phoenix, I can't say his name. Joaquin. So, Joaquin. There you Joaquin. go. Joaquin. Say like whacking. M on the end. Joaquin. Joaquin, Joaquin Felix. There you go. Not Felix. Phoenix. Fe- Phoenix. I don't know why I said Phoenix. Now say it all together. <laughs> jo- Joaquin Phoenix. I say Joss Whedon. Josh Whedon. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, your point. Um, is, is that film is like, well, I'm just looking at New York, but I think that film's obviously trying to do a different thing. What I liked about this one is that I wasn't just looking at, well, some of it is obviously shot there, but wasn't just looking at New York. There was a bit more of a fantasy element about it in terms of the architecture, and I liked that. The chemical plant was a standout, and obviously they go to a um, amusement park at the end. I thought, oh, this is terrific. I like that. I did. I thought yeah. that was great. I was saying to Alex earlier today, um, there's a massive fight scene that happens in that amusement park, and I'm not saying this is a bad thing, but it reminded me of the fight between Scaramanga and Bond in Man of the Golden Gun <laughs> yeah. with the mirror, with the mirrors <laughs> yeah. and everything. I thought, ah, yeah. huh, we're, we're back at that now. <laughs> but it is good. It, that, that whole design at the end there is terrific. I thought that maybe the, the final fight there sort of drew out a little too long for and my- it's a pretty if it's a if you if you really watch that fight, it's yeah. There's a lot of people pulling their punches. The the stunt people in that film in that sequence are doing a fantastic job of selling what are some pretty mediocre moves <laughs> by the yeah. main cast. <laughs> like you, you watch these dudes and they are flying everywhere, and you look at the like spinning bird kick, yep. and it's just like a bit average. Unfortunately, they had like five characters to sort of cover. Oh, over that period, and it's really, really hard to coordinate that sort of massive action scene. Yeah, but I feel like they probably used the main cast too much to do Agreed. those stunts. Like they should have really let the stunt people go to town in this yeah. sequence because mm. they, like they, they do use the environment that they're in really well. Like it's about like it reminds me of going to a kid's playground. Yeah. Essentially, that's what it is. And just jumping around and doing, you know, you're trying to do crazy stuff. It's like a kid's dream reimagined <laughs> as this wonderful arena of springs and bouncy bits. Um, just the the choreography is there, but if you pay a little bit too much attention to it, which is probably my own yeah. fault, really, I should have just sort of sat back and gone, oh, this is fun, which it is. Well, I mean, I definitely paid too much attention to the ham and uh, egg and bacon sandwich that she's trying to have at the beginning of the film. Like, <sighs> I was so hungry yeah. <laughs> like the film is deliberately making like it's like a god tier breakfast that she <laughs> looks always like one as well i'm like oh, and really it looks one. incredible i think mm. i'll give this film five stars just for the shot of the breakfast it was so good yeah. <laughs> um i just talking to the fight scene at the end we should talk about who they're fighting which is uh the villain who i forget the name of but black mask black mask it's very forgettable but well the villain the masked version of the villain very forgettable but the Human persona played by the ever fantastic Ewan McGregor, and he's playing Roman Sionis. Is the Roman guy's real world name Sionis? Now, Ewan McGregor, we can all agree, is a great actor. He's definitely overacting in this, but I still love him for it. I think he was definitely that was a definitely the direction. Yeah, he's over the top, and I thought he's he a very violent criminal. Yeah, he was quite scary actually. He has a, he's clearly unstable. I thought um who's his henchman? Uh, uh that guy. Yeah, the that guy, guy with the grey hair. Yeah. I thought he was way more scary than Roman. I thought he was Vic- like Victor Saz? Yeah, Zass. That's Zass? Right. Yeah. Who's a classic Batman villain in his own right. Okay. I I, I thought he was the the more terrifying part. He he okay. he seemed a lot more realistic as a bad guy, didn't he? And you were like, "Man, that guy's bad." He could be in John Wick. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's yeah. a really good point. Yeah. That's a really good point. Talk, talking of that fight scene at the end, I don't want to say who it is, but there is someone who, shall we say their death is quite explosive, 
And <sighs> I was so like, it's in context of the film is actually, it, it works. Like it's sort of violence for comedy and shock. Yeah. Play. I was just so stunned by it because it shows you everything. And, yeah. I, was, and I was sitting there going, what did I just watch? Yeah, that, yeah. That, that was definitely uh, when you don't mean to have a verbal response to something <laughs> because you're yeah. in a setting with other people. And yeah, I, and I and I literally because it, it really came out of nowhere. I was like, oh! Th- this film has violence, but not to that level. A little bit like um, in Enola Holmes when yes. there's yeah. when I the, thought like, of that. the sudden violence at the end of that. It's not. <laughs> Enola Holmes is not nearly as... They sort of build uh, out to a little bit better in this. They've got a little bit of gore spread out throughout the... Yeah. (laughs) But not not someone literally exploding (laughs) right in front of you. (laughs) And what's great is that you're not going to give it away because it does come out of nowhere and there's no way you can work out when that happens. It was as horrible as this sounds. It was a nice surprise. If, if, If you haven't seen the film... It's a wonderful surprise to have. So he won't tell you who it happens to. Yeah. But if you have seen the film, you know exactly what we're talking about <laughs> and you can reimagine that and enjoy that. Oh, yeah. I want to I watch this film again for two reasons. One, obviously, The Breakfast, which is just amazing, and that death of that, of that person. Now, one thing that I find interesting about these sort of films, and this, is, this is a female ensemble film. Yes. Yeah. And what really stood out to me is that they weren't hammering home to us that this is an all-female film and therefore you have to like it because it's an all-female film because lady power and all that sort of stuff like sometimes when that is done that is really forced into you saying look we're going against the norm we're all we're an all-female cast like look at us i think my example for that would be the ghostbusters reboot yeah now my example for this is what i call the the alien argument which is sigourney weaver in the first alien not once in even though that film has a lot of metaphors about um sex and all that kind of stuff but not once in that film does anything that she do happen because she's a woman she's just a cool yeah. badass character her gender has nothing to do with it she's mm. just awesome and i think i agree this film is a similar thing it doesn't matter that they're all women the fact is that they're cool people yeah that are good at what they do i think I, that's, that's a writing pattern i think they're just starting to sort of really Nail down. Yeah, they're try- they're slowly working that out. Like I really feel like the writing in this with these all, the, all these female characters was so good. Mm, they're really cool. Was, as well. I I really liked every single character in this movie. I didn't, you know, structure and, and stuff aside, <laughs> but um, I really enjoyed. It. Like you compare that to like Ocean's Eight, which was the all female version of the other Ocean's films, and you know. Th- Absolutely, make the film. It's fine. But they sort of forced these social issues that weren't really relevant to the plot of the film, you know, them being all female. In this case, it was just, they're just people. They just happen to come together. They're just, yeah, yeah, people that happen to come together. And I really, really like that. I I completely agree with that point. Um, Not to, you know, I'm no expert on it, but I mean, surely equality is not having to remind people, hey, we've got women in this film. Equality is going, we've got people in this film and it doesn't yeah. matter what gender they are. They just, if, they, if they're trained at being a ninja, it doesn't really matter, you know, where they come from. They're trained in it. They're good at it. I think know? my, my favourite character in this is the Huntress. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. The crossbow girl. Cross, yeah, cross, crossbow, <laughs> crossbow killer. <laughs> I forgot about that. That's a really funny joke. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> I just... Yeah, there's some really nice banter in this as yeah, well. There is. I love the um, dialogue in this film. But yeah, oh man, Huntress, I was like, <laughs> she is a cool cat. She rides a bike and she's got a crossbow. But I love how embarrassed she gets as well. It's yeah. So it was really funny. She's it's- like this amazing assassin killer and then she's like super socially awkward. Yeah, that was it, yeah. It like you really see well when she's like practicing the scene where she's practicing <laughs> how to like reveal her name. She goes, I am the Hunt. Like, I am the Huntress. Mm. I- <laughs> I I know you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm trying to like <laughs> physically like do like the awkward sort of posing sort of stuff. I thought it's like you know that's that's cool. I really yeah. I really enjoyed that. She was like um uh like a, a relatable Batman in some way because she's not rich. Well, that and she's trying to avenge her parents' death as well. Oh, you know? whereas what Batman's just what lazy. Uh, Batman's trying to do the same thing as well. <laughs> But she's like relatable. She's down to earth. Sure, she, sure. She's, we're, we're like, yeah, we've all we've all sat in front of the mirror I, and like said our name before. I, I have to admit, this is the first time I've seen one of these uh, this DC universe films where I haven't finished it. Going, oh, that was great, but I wanted more Batman. I didn't bother me that he wasn't in this. I had a terrible thought during this. Oh, 
when Harley Quinn is really up against the wall in the end of this, I thought to myself, wouldn't it be cool if the Joker turned up? Oh. And then I remembered Jared Leto's Joker. Is and... returning for Zack Snyder's Justice I, League. Oh. I'm so scared. He does, don't put him in it. And she is shooting new stuff for it as well. I was so excited <laughs> for a Snyder cut. And now that he's going to be in it, I was like, why? Rest assured, listeners, he does not make an appearance in this. No, Jar- no Jared Leto is so far away from this movie, it's safe to watch. They use like, do they do they use a couple of like shots at the back of his head? It's, no, it's not him. It's a stand-in. Exactly. I yeah. guarantee you it's a stand-in. Yeah. yeah. Again, like because of the way that this story is, it would have been great for the Joker to have turned up just because of how good Harley Quinn's character is, is yeah. in this. But unfortunately, it would have to be Jared Leto. So just forget it. <laughs> Yeah, I'd be happy with Batman, but like if he was sort of indirectly involved, like they see him as like that god tier level superhero, mm. like it's just sort of something that's happening in the distance. Because you know, you think about the characters in this; they are basically human. Yeah, you yeah. know, some of them have got undergone some sort of change in them, that, and some of them have sort of a little bit of superhumany mm. stuff about them. But for the most part. Mm. They appear human, so they're just sort of going through like a normal sort of expi- well, it's not normal at all, but <laughs> you know, you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah, like, they're, I, they're I not, get it, yeah. they're not Superman level. No, the color palette on this is fantastic. I love the colors. Mm. Love the colors. If only I weren't colorblind. <laughs> oh yeah, how was it in black and white? Uh, actually, I thought this film was actually shot quite well. Yeah, yeah, like there's technically there's nothing wrong with it. No, I, I think, don't think bit of a muddy plot, but I think I have to admit I think that's kind of in its favour, if I'm honest. Because you you are inside Harley Quinn's head and she's not all there. Yeah. Wasn't there... A, there was a sequence with where she does like a dance number yeah, or something? I love that. That was terrific. Where she's about to be beaten up, I think. And no, she's, she's about go- to be tortured and she goes into her own little world where she's doing oh, a cabaret yeah. number, which was superb. Really cool. A little out of left field. I was not I, I was a little taken aback, but I wasn't... It wasn't taking... It didn't take me out of the film. No. no it, I was it, like, it, this it, is something an insane pe- person would think of. <laughs> but it, it did come as a bit of a surprise. So it did feel a little bit out of place to me. I was like, oh, okay. So she hallucinates. Cool. I, I didn't think he was out of place. I thought, ah, oh, we're starting to peel back the layers of Harley Quinn, her insanity. Oh, yeah. yeah. Talking of her insanity, though, I love her relationship with her pet hyena, <laughs> which is you know, so named Bruce. Good. Named Bruce, I think. Yeah. yeah. I I smelt a hyena once at a zoo. Yeah. I was walking past its enclosure and I almost gagged. So every time I see a hyena now, I think you could not live with that. <laughs> Side story. I love how this film, like that cabaret number, the pet hyena, it's it's willing to be a bit weird and mm-hmm. celebrate its weirdness. Yeah. I I really liked their little backstory and setup of her of Harley Quinn going through her change of going, you know, showing it was only a very small bit, but her change of becoming obsessed with the Joker, even though oh, she's yeah. still normal and then now, I, going the cartoon through four, bit? Yeah. And I, it was it was a mix of the cartoon and real life. And and uh, there's visuals. actually shots from Suicide Squad that they've obviously used in this, but I actually think this film did a better job of that backstory. But again, <laughs> I, I like I do like that we've got Suicide Squad to compare this movie to. Because I know yes. when I when this was announced I thought, oh God, like just let it die. Um and then when I saw the trailer I thought, okay, I have to admit, that looks pretty good. Mm. And and I was very cautious when I sat down to watch this. I thought, I, I like Margot Robbie in this part, but Suicide Squad has left such a bad taste in my mouth. Yeah. And this film, within about five minutes, completely washed that away. And I thought, this is terrific. I really, I really hope that with the new The Suicide Squad that they're mm-hmm. bringing out, that Margot Robbie is not the central focus. Yeah, me too. I really want them to expand on things. We've got enough of Harley Quinn now. Yeah. We need to see these other characters. There needs to be redemption for some other characters. <laughs> and we need to expand the universe. Like, I agree. I don't want there to be this obsession with Margot Robbie because she's a good-looking female who can act. I want. I need to see more characters, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We need to see more Jai Courtney. I'm glad he'll be there. I just Jai I'm, Courtney? Yeah. I'm glad he'd be there, but I, I just, I, if the Suicide Squad has um, the amount of characterization that this film did, like yeah. Birds of Prey, I think did a really good job with the supporting cast. It, it sort of fleshed out a lot of their mo- motivation. Well, like we said, we like all the characters, yeah, and which means that the filmmakers and scriptwriters have done their jobs and actually made them 
different characters that yeah. you can attach yourself to or, or empathize with or whatever. It's five characters over the course of 100 minutes, which is incredibly like concise writing. Yes, I would agree. Yeah, and then yeah. also to be as funny as this film is, yeah. as well, is yeah. um, pretty impressive. And they do give a bit of time to those supporting characters yeah. to have a bit of screen time to tell their stories a bit as well, which was which was done really well. I guess the only thing to do now is to work. okay. So out of five, what- I think it's got to be um, egg and bacon sandwiches, hasn't it? Because that that <laughs> breakfast. Oh, yeah. oh I want to make that. Right now. <laughs> I want to make that my screensaver. If this film. <laughs> It is the best food porn I think I've ever yeah. seen. I must admit, I do always find it a little bit weird when characters like that have some sort of obsession with something during like a violent like chase scene. <laughs> yeah. I do feel like, come on, your priorities can't be that much about the I think the for sandwich. Harley Quinn, perhaps the first character that actually you go, yeah, I could kind of see that happening. Okay, yeah. Because well, she is, yeah. if you weren't clear... Insane. <laughs> She's not all there. Okay, so we're out of five out of out of five egg and bacon sandwiches. Egg and bacon sandwiches. Mm. She have a bit of hot sauce on there. She as does. She does. Yeah. Just the right amount of hot sauce. Oh. Has anyone ever put hot sauce in the egg and bacon? No, I, I, I want to now. I've had egg and bacon, and I've and I've got some hot sauce in my um, sand fridge, and yeah, it goes well. Okay, Oof. just a little bit. It just gives it a little bit. Okay. Ah. Okay. Yeah. Good. I'm gonna try this. I think. Yeah, 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 just just don't overdo it because you still want the flavour of everything yeah. else to come through. Uh, my mouth is watering. I'm Mine too, uh, yeah. I'll go first tonight. I don't okay, yeah, yeah, please do. Uh, I'm just going to give it a solid three. Yep. Yeah, I think it's pretty like, uh, I wasn't disappointed by it. I really, I, I expected lighter tone after the, after the five years of DC <laughs> we've gotten. And we, I certainly got a nice lighter tone. Uh, Ewan McGregor was was. You know, pretty pretty great. I think he's probably sort of outshone by his little henchman there, Victor Zaz, uh, played by some guy, some TV actor. I'll be right back with your uh, guy. <laughs> I thought Mary Elizabeth Winstead as Huntress was fantastic. Oh yeah, she sort of maybe was a little bit better than Margot Robbie. At some, Ooh. but Margot Robbie, she was very, she was solid. She was great. She was great. Easy three, easy three. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll follow on from that if that's okay, Alex. Um, I, I would agree. The sense of fun in this movie, even though I do like previous DC films, I was not expecting from a franchise that has become notoriously dark and gloomy. Um, the fun is electric in this. Everyone is enjoying being there, and I had a. I did not expect to like this as much as I did. Loved it, and um, would would happily watch this again. I'm going to give it a four. I am going to sit with Steve in a three. Yeah. I was. I feel like that's that's a solid result for this. Three out of five is a, you know, a, a solid number for it because I do feel like the structure is a bit loose. It's a bit all over. It's a bit long, but you know the the action sequences are quite enjoyable, and it's got wonderful. I know I'm colorblind, but. <laughs> The color, like the black and white's really shine. I don't see in black and white, okay. Um, and I'm not going to talk about it right now because it's a tough subject. All right. Oh, sorry, sorry. Green um, and browns are something to behold. <laughs> I can't tell between red and green. Um, <laughs> is it that it has some like wonderful lashings of color in what is a universe that is drab? Uh, yeah. Admittedly, in the last sort of the films that we've got out of it. To answer your question, it's Chris Messina. He's great. That plays Saz. He's, he's in the newsroom. He's really, really good in that as well. Is he really? Yeah. Who's he playing that? He's uh, Jane Fonda's son. Okay. Uh, Fondu. <laughs> Jeez. Josh Whedon. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I think, you know, it's it's not a family film, but... Uh, no, no, no. This is this is definitely for adults. You could probably remove the swearing and the violence and it would be a family film. Like, yeah. you know, Harley yeah. Quinn what is a, a... What about the person who explodes... Uh, again, if you remove the violence, you know. Um, and you're right, Ewan McGregor plays a fantastic bad guy. He is good. Yeah. Birds of Prey, I think, is something <laughs> I would enjoy uh, the more I sort of dwell on it. I think well, I, you know, I... I gladly watch it again. I sat down because I'm like, okay, yeah, we're going to do the podcast. I didn't see it when it came out. Mm. I was like, okay, I'm going to watch it. Let's do this. And... Um, started watching it, and then my wife she she came along because she originally was like, oh, "I'm not gonna, I might come and late go, you know, watching it." And she then she was like, "Can you pause it? I just need to go into the, you know, I just need to, <laughs> and I'll be back in a sec." 
And she was like, I'm in. She's like, she she loved it. She thought yeah. it was good. This film has a very weird ability to act, to literally draw you in. Because yeah, it is it is engaging. But mm. uh, yeah, I think you know, I think three three out of five is is what I'm going to go with. I think the only unbelievable thing is uh, Harley Quinn's landlord like sells her out, and she doesn't do anything to him. Yeah, I thought that was a bit strange, wasn't it? Because I was like, oh, surely she's going to just you know punch Murder him in the guts or something, or you know, set a <laughs> set a hyena onto him, <laughs> um, give him a dose of insane mm. in the membrane. Uh, but yeah, it just doesn't doesn't. Yeah, that was that was out of character. Yeah. Is that just because she really liked him, or yeah, she did. She mm. he was the only person that she trusts, and he, even he backstabs her. Did yeah. we figure out why the little girl has a cast? Little pickpocket girl. Is she using it as a prop so that she can steal things? Maybe, maybe. Or is it part of a backstory because we do hear her parents fighting? Oh yeah, maybe. Yeah, That's a good it, point. it is a DC film. I, like, it is dark. You know, I mean, I, 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 I again had a <laughs> had a bit. Oh gee whiz! <laughs> what Matthew? What? what just, it, someone says throw a, <laughs> throw a little bit of child abuse in there. You well, know? I'm just saying, DC historically speaking, over the last few films have. Occasionally taking it far too far. My okay. favourite part uh, of that example is at the beginning of Justice League when he kicks over the oranges. That's a really dark, <laughs> dark part. They're, they're, yeah, all right. Um, with with the the young girl character who is you know, who Harley Quinn is trying to protect because she has the diamond. I, I don't know if that's part of the film that we yeah. talked about. Um, <laughs> that Harley Quinn is trying to protect her and then extract the diamond. I felt like the 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 young girl character was a little bit ungrateful. Of the help that she was getting, like we go, they go through all these scenes of like you know Harley Quinn is protecting her from being shot and killed, and then they come out as like yeah, angsty teenager. I think oh. that's because it was that was her character. Okay, well I'm useless at reviewing films, so oh, don't wow. pay attention to what I'm talking about. Wow, uh, <laughs> that's the um, exact reason I was marooned on this island. Yeah, well there you go. That's what Alex. I, let's I, not get I, into this. I want to validate your opinion <laughs> that I can't review films. No, no. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Oh, can we just wrap up now? <laughs> no, what are you trying to validate? Uh, I, it doesn't matter now, does it? <laughs> just a quick question. Does Because we're talking DC Universe, does Batman ever avenge the death of his parents for those responsible or for that? I think I'm, the idea is that it's an ongoing, it's a, it's a continuous thing that I'm can never fair. ever be done. No, I think, the, yeah, like Steve is right, I think his idea is that he's maintaining yeah. and, and it's an ongoing battle. Justice right. is not a... Yeah, it's, it's not a lofty it's, goal. It's just yeah. a it's like personal development. You just keep at it. You okay. can't just you can't just join a league. No, you, know, <laughs> you gotta you gotta fight for justice. Okay, kick over the oranges. Kick over those pesky oranges. Right, <laughs> Harley Quinn and the Fantabulous Emancipation of Wait, is that right? No, Birds no, of Prey yes. and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. That title is growing on me a lot. <laughs> I really like it now. Yeah, that's ten. Three, three, and four. Yeah. Terrific. So if we've got that wrong, please send us an email. <laughs> uh, we would really appreciate it. We've been the Trail Island Podcast. And yeah, 10 out of 15. We're all bopping along to the yeah. music. It's good, isn't it? You can find us at trailerisland.com.au or wherever you find your podcast. Please share us with anyone out there that you feel like might enjoy. Yeah, and definitely podcast. send through any Do you requests. like movies? Because we do and you can... You can be part of the podcast. Yeah. Send us suggestions. Uh, <laughs> uh, tell us if we're wrong as well. Yeah, please do. Uh, we, we do enjoy these discussions, actually. We wouldn't mind having our opinions challenged every now and then. Yeah, do send us an email to contact at trailerisland.com.au. You can head over to the Facebook page as well and send us a message and just let us know what you think. Send us an yeah. audio clip of yourself as well if you feel like, I want to be on. Yeah, we'll put yeah. you on. Yeah. yeah. No cussing. No, keep it That's clean. Naughty, keep naughty, it. no swearing. Um, we've been the Trail Island podcast. I've been Alex. I've been joined by Matthew uh, and Steve. You always seem confused about your own name, and I love it. I think it's fantastic. Is that because are we about to see the fantabulous emancipation of one Steve? No, it's just because I'm <laughs> off my meds and I'm deathly heat stroke. <laughs> uh, we've been the Trail Island podcast. Back in the shade. <laughs> We'll see you for next week. Another good episode. English could speak, yes. We love you. Good night. Emancipation. This is a Narrative Network podcast.